Okay, so one example of making algorithms relatable for your students is to think about something like baking a cake. So let's search for a cake recipe. All right, so we found one on sugarspunandrun.com. We could scroll through, read the entire blog, or what I think I'm going to do just for brevity sakes is I'm going to go to just a recipe to app and let's see if we can get just a recipe here we are now we have the algorithm right so you see the algorithm it is right here called directions uh, we do need to add a few additional steps so some of the steps are to preheat the oven to 350 degrees. Prepare two eight inch round cake pans. Line the bottoms with parchment paper and lightly grease the sides. Set aside. So all of those, we could write those all out as an algorithm. Those are all instructions. There are a few instructions that the recipe is taking uh, for granted. Uh, when we're thinking about algorithms, we really want to be very specific, very purposeful. And so, so an additional step I may add is to gather uh, these ingredients, right? Gather half cup of unsalted butter, gather half cup canola oil. And then I would say gather pans, gather bowl, right? After we gather all of our ingredients and our uh, utensils, then we could jump into the next instruction is to do the preheat. Then in the bowl of a stand mixer, something I would want to gather, uh, cream together the butter, the canola oil, and the sugar. We would know that we need these measurements of butter, canola oil, and sugar uh, from our previous gathering steps. Then we can add the eggs, then we can stir in the vanilla, but each step goes in a specific order and after a specific, um, you know, either stir or uh, electric mixer, and then we get down to divide the batter into the cake pans, uh, bake for 30 to 35 minutes. So when we want to think about that 30 to 35 minutes, if you're writing this as an algorithm, we can say bake for 30 minutes check doneness uh, with uh, the spring back to touch or toothpick if toothpick is wet or spring back uh, does not spring back add three minutes and then you can create essentially what we would call a loop and so after three minutes you could do the same thing see if it springs back or see if your wet if your toothpick comes out clean if it um, doesn't we go back through the loop again and you keep asking the question all right we've given it three minutes more or four minutes more uh, whatever you want to put into the algorithm then you would say when the toothpick comes out mostly clean with a few moist crumbs no wet batter then you would pull the cakes out then you would allow them to cool for uh, you'd say maybe 15 minutes uh, then after the 15 minutes, invert them into a, onto a cooling rack and cool completely. And then you would say cool completely, maybe 30 minutes, uh, 40 minutes. And then frost cake using chocolate frosting. We really need a, another uh, set of instructions to now go make the chocolate frosting. But just make chocolate frosting, that's an abstraction. And then if we want to go into the details, we would figure out, well, what are all the steps of the algorithm to make chocolate frosting? But I think something like making a cake, it's a very classic example of something uh, that makes algorithms and the development and the analysis uh, very uh, achievable and relatable for students. Thanks.